Hi, and thank you for joining me on this episode of Reflect with Renee. I think if you're someone who suffers from anxiety or panic attacks, you're going to find this episode very, very useful. But let me start by saying that I am not a medical doctor or a licensed, a licensed uh, psychologist or a practitioner. So if you are suffering in the moment, feel like you may be doing harm to yourself or others, please check in with a licensed medical physician as soon as possible. Now, that being said, let's go ahead and jump into Reflect with Renee, Anxiety and Panic Attacks. Today, I've got five steps that I've used to help me get through and get over having panic attacks. When I was suffering from anxiety and panic attacks, it honestly was years. Um, I was going through therapy that was not working for me. I had a medication cocktail of at least uh, three different drugs. I want to say it was clonopin, gabapentin, and azofran for the side effects of those two medications. But that being said, uh, there were some things that tools I began to use that got me off that medication and really helped me handle things on my own. Things that I would definitely recommend you using if you are somebody that is having problem with panic attacks. I know that feeling. I know when your mind is racing and sometimes your thoughts feel a bit uh, irrational, your body feels out of control. I know I would sometimes get very nauseous, feel like I needed to sit down. I at times would start crying, um, things like that where I just felt totally out of control. That fight or flight response kicks in. And the only feeling you have is to run, but you don't know where you're running from or running to. So I just want to try and offer some of you some relief. Or if you have a friend or family member that suffers from panic attacks, I can tell you that asking the person to calm down or telling them it's going to be okay is typically not the best way to go. Because for them in that moment, it's just something they're out of control with. And so hopefully these are some tips and tricks that you can use to help them deal in the moment to help uh, relieve some of that kind of just racing, just out of control feeling that happens when that fight or risk flight response kicks in. So the first thing I want to bring mention is really just knowing that most panic attacks will only last two to 20 minutes. The sympathetic uh, system can only last for so long before it'll begin to kind of just wear down and the parasympathetic system will kind of kick in. So the first tool that I used to use is to just to stop myself, really identify the cue within my own body that I was getting that out of control sensation, that tightness in my chest, my racing, that racing in my head. And just quiet myself down and breathe and simply remind myself that it was temporary feeling that it was going to pass and that it wasn't going to possibly last more than 20 minutes. That was the first thing that began to at least let me know with that temporary notion that it was going, there was going to be relief, that this wasn't going to be something I had to necessarily give into, that I could just sit quietly let it pass like a wave passing over you and it would subside. The second thing that I use, and I still at times use this if I'm beginning to feel anxious, is obviously a breathing technique. And there are a large number of breathing techniques out there. Some are to just sit quietly and inhale, taking some very deep belly inhales and exhaling slowly, possibly putting your hand on your heart. One that I like in particular is an abdominal breathing technique. It really helps me to focus and get that negative racy energy I felt in my body out. And the way you want to start this technique is either to ground yourself sitting with your legs not crossed, your legs side by side, feet on the floor, or if you can sit on the floor, 
and ground yourself with your hip bones in the floor or even kneeling, but you want to be kind of sitting up for this. The next thing that you're going to do is really just focus on the forcing the breath out because your body will naturally contract. So I just do this for the nose and I really just focus on the belly and contracting it in and letting that air go out because you'll naturally take your next inhale. And I try to do that for 25 or 50 times in the same moment, visualizing that I'm just pushing all that negativity that I'm feeling in that moment out. So we just do those at a nice pace, 50 if you can, but I try to at least do 25. And just by that act of focusing on the gut, really sucking it in, forcing that air out, forcing that negativity out, letting your breath, allowing your breath to take that next inhale, you'll find that as you reach that 25th and take just a deep cleansing breath out, your body will really begin to settle. Now, so that's technique number two. Number three is your just your basic grounding or rooting technique. If you're familiar with grounding, it's really just getting down either on the floor, if you can, on the lawn, if you're in for on like a sofa or something, that's actually fine too. But just laying flat and still as you can and letting yourself breathe deep into the belly and exhaling slowly for five seconds or so while you just allow yourself to melt into the ground, allow you to fill your head kind of weightless, just kind of ease yourself into the floor, fill your shoulders, your back and your hip bones, melt into the floor, focus on your breath and connect to just grounding, just connecting yourself and rooting yourself back to the earth. Similar technique on those out breaths, just to picture that negative toxic energy moving out of your body. When you inhale, you're just taking in some fresh, beautiful air, feel it crossing through your lungs, breathe in that light and just keep doing that until you begin to feel your body soften. You'll feel that, that tenseness that we get in our bodies when we feel anxious or having a panic attack, that, that tenseness in your chest that you feel in your limbs, feel your feet against the floor, wiggle your toes a little bit. You might want to put your hands across your chest connect to the beating of your heart. Just be aware, be aware of your body, be aware of your hands, be aware of your feet and get grounded and connected back into the earth. And number four, number four is something I also still use to this day and I am a huge fan of aromatherapy. So I personally find lavender to be very, very soothing. I still carry a little bottle in my purse today. I used to use it flying. I used to use it, you know, actually anytime I was out, if I was in a crowd and just starting to not feel right. And you can just take just a little bit and just dab it right underneath your nose, right across your upper lip, perhaps maybe a little bit behind your ears, maybe a little bit on your chest and just use that as an aid, as, a, as an aid in your breathing technique to just inhale, inhale that scent, let it calm and soothe you and wash over you. And just a little side note to this is if you are doing any meditation and you can do some aromatherapy with the lavender during your meditation when you're at home, if you can start a meditation practice, what's kind of what's called pairing, and your body will start to recognize that because meditation calms you down. You can pair it with the lavender. So when your body gets the cue of that lavender, your the sensors in your body will in, in your brain will say, "Oh, okay, this is a time where we need to calm down," and it will start to bring you down. And it's a great kind of cue for your body that, "Hey, this is a time we need to relax. We need to kind of let go in this moment." So those are four that you may or may not be familiar with, but I just thought I want to walk you through those. And then the fifth one is one that 
I personally used, it's not, I don't know that it's something I necessarily invented, but what I found was in my, at that, at this stage, when I kind of came up with this, at this stage of my treatment, I really couldn't see myself outside of anxiety. I really identified as being an anxious person. I felt like anxiety is something that kind of had overwhelmed me and was kind of just this predominant figure in my life. And I came to the realization one day that that just that it just simply was not true. I just had simply labeled myself as this anxious person. It was always going to be a part of my life. Um, you know, these pan this panic disorder and I didn't feel like I had control over it. So to get control over it, I had to separate myself from it. I had to kind of look at it as this separate entity. So what I began to do was a visualization exercise and I've kind of made, I guess you could say I made friends with it. And the friend that I created was a little monster in my mind named Harry. He was probably blue and fuzzy and friendly, maybe something you'd see from the Trolls movies. He had rainbow socks and he was very friendly and inviting, but he's what represented my anxiety and panic attacks. And I just made it a, a separate entity from myself. So when I felt that cue, when I felt my body tensing up, when I felt my thoughts starting to race, I really just began to think of Harry which some of you might think this sounds funny, but I promise you this actually does work. So I would picture Harry and I would think, oh, okay, Harry showed up today. And I would have a conversation. And I would have a conversation along the lines of, hey, you know, I know you're here and I know you want to engage Mary right now. And I know you want to be a part of this moment, but I really, I just don't have time. I really just cannot do this and I don't want this in my in my life in this moment. And what I found was the more frequently I did this, the greater the span between panic attacks came until they became fewer and fewer, shorter and shorter, and they began to dissipate. So if you can make up a friendly little creature in your mind, and when I say monster, I mean a friendly, funny, cool monster or any type of thing that brings you joy. I don't want it to be something that's more frightful for you. Just give it a name, label it. That's your panic monster. That's your anxiety monster. And just let him know on those days where he's wanting to kind of creep in at the most inopportune moments that, hey, I understand that you're there. Give it love, give it respect, but I'm just not going to engage you right now. I can't let you in right now. You're going to have to go hang out and play with some friends somewhere else because I don't have time at this moment. And I think that's something that may or may not help be helpful for you. I know Harry was very helpful for me. And so that's about it. Those are my five little strategies that I use to help kind of make my panic attacks shorter and way less, less frequent until eventually... Uh, along with other healing work that I was doing, I just was no longer suffering from panic and anxiety. But in my initial phases, when I was still in the depths of it, these are most definitely techniques that I used to help m kind of just start to begin to take control of the situation. So I didn't feel as out of control and as if it was something that was just going to dominate my life dominate my day, keep me from going to an event, keep me from hanging out with friends and things along those lines. So I'm hoping that, you know, play this back as many times as you need. Try any one of them, try them in combination and see if they work for you. And I thank you so much for joining me. I hope you'll check out more at ReneeLauren.com. There's some free resources there. Check out the next podcast. And I hope you have just a beautiful, beautiful rest of your day. Love and light. And I'll see you soon.